In today's video, we are back in Salt Lake City, Utah with Rio Tinto Kennecott, one of my favorite mining operations of all time. The last time we were here was in the fall when we saw the entire copper mining process from blasting to loading to concentrating to smelting. It was absolutely phenomenal seeing copper ore become 99.9% .9 pure copper all in the same place. But we didn't see the entire operation. We missed one key aspect and that's the tailings operation, which we're gonna explore today. And before we check out the operation, it's probably worth a little bit of context as to what tailings is. Now, a small percentage of copper ore is actually copper. The rest is separated out during the concentration process, and it's essentially crushed rock and water, which is the tailings itself. The tailings then travels by pipeline to a tailings impoundment. This is an engineered structure designed to withhold that finely ground rock and recycle the water through the process once again. It sounds really simple, and it is, but it isn't. So let's check out how Rio Tinto and their tailings contractor Ames make it all happen. About 13 miles that way is the concentrator. The concentrator to review takes the ore and separates the copper concentrate from the rock. The rock at this point is crushed into a very fine powder, which is mixed with water to form a slurry. That slurry leaves that concentrator and travels and travels by pipeline to the tailings facility to start the tailings management process. There's two pipelines here. One is 60 inch, one is 48 inch. It's gravity fed. Only one of them works at a time. Correction. These pipes can sometimes be used simultaneously depending on the flow rate. And right now there's about 7,000 tons of material traveling through this pipeline per hour to the splitter box. The only place where we can't wear a hard hat today because if they were to fall off, they can fit perfectly in the pipeline and block it. This is the splitter box. So right below me, we've got that 60 inch line, that slurry coming right out of it into this structure here. And this structure is then designed to split the flow into multiple lines, which then feeds the east and west side. So we've got two lines coming out of here, going to one side of the impoundment, the other side of the impoundment, and then there's a third line going straight to the middle, which is the overflow. So anything the two east and west lines can't accommodate just goes right to the middle, and then those east and west lines go to the cyclone. Before we get to the cyclone, one important thing to note here is that this tailings is coming in a little thicker than what they need to process it and to build that tailings impoundment effectively. So they're adding additional water here at this point to dilute it a little bit more, to get less solids, a little bit more water so that they can more effectively process it. We've split the slurry off east to west. We've split the slurry off east to west. Now we're at one of the cyclone buildings. This is a critical step in the process because we need to separate the coarse sand from the really fine sand because that determines how we can build the impoundment area. What's going on here is each one of these has 23 cyclones. These cyclones are spinning this material. The heavier stuff goes to the outside, the lighter stuff goes to the inside. The lighter stuff then comes out the top, the heavier stuff then drops to the bottom, and from here it travels via pipeline again to the valve house where it can then be distributed. A little bit more science class here. This is the whole tailings. So this is what has been pulverized in the mill to very, very, very fine sand and then really, 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 really fine rock. This is what's pumped to the tailings facility. And then they separate it into two main ingredients. We have the overflow, which is the really fine stuff that they pull out, and the underflow stuff, which is the coarse material that they aim to build that outer perimeter out of. The underflow is what goes in the middle. 
This is one of four valve houses. So after the cyclones, the material ends up here. This is a key part of the process because this diverts the material to where we need it to be within the overall operation. So we take the coarse material and pump it from here up to where the tractors are placing and compacting it. And then we take that fine material and pump it to the interior of the overall tailings area. We're right in the middle of the tailings area. This is where all of the water collects. They want the water to stay away from the outside for the sake of that stability for the impoundment. The water then ends up here where it is pulled with this barge. The pumps are sitting on this barge, pulling this water out to the canal for recycling. Water makes the copper processing and tailings operation go round. It's a lot of water required to make all of this work, but almost all of it is recycled. Kennecott recycles about 85% of the water they use within this operation. So that barge we saw sitting atop the pond with those giant pumps pulling the water out, the water eventually ends up right here in this canal. The canal works its way around the tailings impoundment, and then this water is then eventually pumped back up to the concentrator to begin the process again. The final step in the process, once we've placed all of the tailings, the sand essentially, we cover it all with topsoil and then seed it with native grasses. This helps do a few things. One, it makes it look very nice, provides natural environment. Two, prevents dust from coming off of this slope, and then three, prevents anything from eroding over time. Now that we've covered the overall operation, let's check out how Ames crews build the impoundment. This is the underflow material. It comes straight from the cyclone material. Um, basically, it's, it's everything that's coarse, it's what we used to build all this impoundment everywhere we're coming up. Um, we just run our tractors over here. It's what we used to compact, pack the sand. Um, it helps decant the water. And um, we grade these cells about a quarter of a percent. Uh, we've got a drainage box down Oh, there. so the water slopes down. Yep, so we're sloping the water all the way down. We've okay. got a drainage box down that corner. I and mean, then we just, we just kind of slowly stack boards up in there and that's where we kind of raise the levels of the the sand up, it's a, it's a pretty simple process overall how yeah. we do this. When you're building a cell, how much are you going up at a time? Um, we target about four foot at a time. So each cell will get about two box raises is what we call them as box raise. Um, so we, like I said, we target eight feet a year is what is is what we're going for. Um, but eight feet all the way around. Yep, eight feet all the way around. We've got about seven, seven and a half miles of impoundment low raise. Okay. Um, and we were saying earlier we have a about six and a half million cubic yards of material we'll place just this year alone. Okay. Mostly using gravity and water. Yep, it's all, it's, it is almost all used just gravity and water, what we get from the cyclones. Nice. So it's, it's pretty unique. This is one of the first times we, only tailings facilities I know they use the tractors like this to actually compact and, and build the tailings dams using this method. Yeah. Um, Ames, we've been doing this tailings impoundment for 20 some odd years now, about 23 years now. Um, when we first started the contract, we were using different types of equipment, but through a lot of trial and error, uh, we figured out these John Deere tractors were actually the best best equipment to use. Um, and we've been using them for about uh, 16 years, 17 years now. It's worth noting that the impoundment is engineered for seismic activity, ensuring the safety of the surrounding area during earthquake events. A huge thank you for Ames and especially Rio Tinto Kennecott for having us out today. We loved it. We're going to go catch a flight while it's starting to rain. See you on the next one. Stay dirty.